Our story begins in 1964. Doug Dickey had just become the new head coach for the University of Tennessee football team. For many people, it just seemed like another year of football. Another year of big hits, amazing passes, and unbelievable touchdowns. However, something major was about to happen. Pretty soon, that major event would change all of college football for the rest of history. Lester McLean played football for Antioch High School in Nashville, Tennessee. He had a decent year, and after high school, he began to think about his options for colleges that he could play football for. He had originally considered the University of Tennessee, and even started telling people he would play for UT, until assistant coach Doug Knotts told McLean to stop telling people he would play, and that the University of Tennessee wasn't even interested in him. McLean then considered his options, Middle Tennessee State, possibly Austin P, or even Columbia Military Academy. However, after careful consideration and much help from Bill Garrett, another Antioch High School alumni, Lester McLean became the first African American football player for UT. Now Lester McLean was a volunteer. As former UT student Dan Conway puts it, when Lester McLean stepped out on that field, he wasn't black or white. He was orange, and he was red, white, and blue. It was late in the fourth quarter in the Tennessee versus Georgia game, and Tennessee was down by eight points. Most people had even started to leave the stadium. Tennessee had the ball deep in their own territory, and Bubba White threw the ball downfield to Lester McLean. It was a first down. The faithful Tennessee fans who remained in the audience were given a little hope, and as the last seconds of the clock wound to zero, Tennessee was able to score and convert two extra points. Lester McLean gave hope for the football game that day, but he also gave hope for the future of mankind. Tennessee tied Georgia that game, and the rest of the season led to an overall record of eight wins, two losses, and one tie. McLean helped the Vols much that year, and the next two years, where he would continue to play for Tennessee. Lester McLean finished in 1970 with 70 career catches for 1,003 yards and 10 touchdowns. He had an 82-yard touchdown reception from Bobby Scott in the 1969 Memphis State game. He was determined to make the best of things, despite some people still unsure about a Negro playing football. In 1970, McLean led the Big Orange in kickoff return yards, bringing eight kicks back a total of 168 yards. The Chicago Bears later selected him in the ninth round of the 1971 NFL Draft. At the time that you played football, did you realize that your actions would have a wider uh, have wider implications for the future of football, or were you kind of just focused on trying to play football? Uh, yes, I knew that the implications were there. I knew that uh, what I did had everything to do with uh, other kids coming after me, hmm. um, having the opportunity. Two other black guys were ahead of me by 
on how quickly um, other African Americans would attend the, the various universities throughout the, the SEC in football in particular. Who do you feel like had the most influence on your being recruited to the University of Tennessee? Bill Garrett would have been that person. I guess that would answer that question more from him. He he had more to do with it than anyone else, I do believe, because he was quite determined. He was quite determined that I got that opportunity uh, right. from the day that I first met him. Um, I'm not so sure he was determined that I would go to Tennessee the day I met him. But uh, he was, he was, I guess, an alumni to the high school I had attended my senior year at Antioch High School. Mm -hmm. if, if not an alumni, he was uh, alumnus. He was uh, very influential to the kids because they went to his drugstore. Um, their parents did. The theme for National History Day this year is rights and responsibilities. At the time that you were interested in playing at UT. Did you feel like it was your right to be on the team? The right to have an opportunity to play, uh, I certainly felt that, um, that that was my right, to getting an opportunity to, if I could get an opportunity to be in the position to prove myself, I, I felt like that, yes, yes, that was a right that I had. Along with that right, did you feel like that you had a responsibility to act a certain way due to the fact that you were one of the first African Americans to play football for the SEC? Mm, certainly, definitely. Even uh, I think that was extremely important uh, because at that time it was important that uh, the opportunity came to two other African American athletes or students, in fact. Um, so it was important that I conducted myself well because I was the, uh, I guess, the training kid uh, to see what it was going to be like and how I responded and that determined uh, who may have an opportunity after me or if anyone had an opportunity after me. So I knew that there was a lot of things that uh, I would have to deal with and uh, taking stride in order to make to make differences. Mr. McLean had broken the color barrier for UT football, and his rights as a football player were becoming clearer. More African American football players began joining the league, and to this day, African Americans have a higher percentage of college football players. In the 2009 to 2010 football season, a survey was released that showed 45.8% of football players were African American and 45.1% were Caucasian. Today, we still see the effects of coach Doug Dickey and Lester's friend Bill Garrett in helping recruit McLean so he could play football at UT. That decision has affected the rights and responsibilities of not only African Americans, but of football players everywhere.